Welcome to the workbench. Today I thought we'd take a look at this RCA All-American 5 radio. Take a quick pan around the radio and take a look at the condition that it's currently in. As you can see, it's got a few scrapes and bangs, but otherwise in reasonably decent shape. A back view. You can see from the back view that the back of the radio, the corners are a little bit chewed up, but it's still reasonably decent shape. Here's a look at the label on the bottom of the radio. It's a model 9X562. I think this one was made in the early 1950s. See if I can get a shot for you of the dial indicator and the condition it's in. As you can see, or maybe not see in this video, uh, the light pipe is pulled away from the casing a little bit it looks like. Hopefully when we get this apart uh, maybe that's something we can straighten out. Okay, let's see if we can take the cover off and have a look and see uh, what it looks like on the inside. How well it survived the years. First we'll pull the knobs. See if we can carefully get behind the knobs and get those off. Take this guy over on this side. It's nice that all the original hardware appears to still be here. Carefully unplug the speaker. And so now we have the case with a fairly nice large speaker for a radio of this size and era. Set that out of the way for our time being. So we have the tuning control on this side, the dial string and the tuning capacitor mechanism still seems to be functional. On the other side we have the volume control and on off switch. That turns freely as well. The back has the built-in antenna, still in decent shape. So let's take a look at the bottom, see what circuitry looks like. Okay, a little more close-up look at what we have on the inside. Get this rotated up perhaps so that the light shines on it a little better. In this case we have, uh, looks like the original electrolytic capacitor still intact, which will definitely need to be replaced. I have a few paper capacitors, uh, which really should ought to be replaced as well. And in this case, it looks like that this radio has seen some repair in the past where some capacitors have been changed and uh, have the connection with the wires just kind of in mid-air there. Uh, when we do the restoration, we'll see can we clean that up a little bit. We should have the 35Z5 rectifier tube 
a 50L6 audio output tube, 12 SQ7 detector, audio frequency, and automatic volume control. Next we have the 12 SK7 IF, and then finally the 12 SA7, uh, the converter. Okay, I slid the chassis aside momentarily so we can take the speaker out and take a look at the cone on the speaker and see what kind of condition it's in. And also that'll allow us to use the speaker when we initially fire this up to see how this radio is working. In this case, the speaker cone looks to still be in really good shape. Seems nice and pliable still. I don't see any tears. So it looks in excellent shape. So it'll sound pretty decent once this radio is back up and running again with that large speaker. With the speaker removed, we can get a little better shot of what the radio looks like on the inside. You can see a little bit of the, uh, the light pipe down here. Where the dial lights will set in the two grooves and shine through the plastic out to the front for the dial pointer. Hopefully when we put this back together we can maybe uh, loosen these screws and adjust that so that looks a little better from the front side. Okay we've connected the speaker again back to the speaker wires so we can go ahead and power this guy up and uh, see how he's operating. I suspect that we're going to find uh, at least the electrolytic capacitor is uh, probably going to be leaking really bad home um, and perhaps other problems but we'll take a look. We'll uh, power it up on the isolation transformer and with the dim bulb tester uh, to make sure that we're safe as we do that. Okay I rolled the radio up on the side and I have the uh, trusty fluke voltmeter connected so that we can see the B plus as we power this up. Um, we're going to plug the radio into the uh, Viz uh, isolation transformer and uh, Variac so we can adjust the voltage on it and then we actually have that plugged in to the dim bulb tester over here so that we can make sure that we current limit everything just in case as we do this initial power up. Okay the radio is plugged in now. First we're going to turn on the dim bulb tester and then we'll turn on our isolation transformer and we'll note that uh, we still have measuring the line voltage we've got a hundred and ten volts line voltage to the dim bulb tester and currently right now we have our voltage out to the radio at just a little over fifty volts and we'll start there okay powers now been switched on on the radio and we have nothing going on. Slowly bring our voltage up a little bit. Look at the current. We're still drawing a safe amount of current and our dim bulb if you can see is just just barely glowing just a little bit and if you can hear now we're starting to get a little bit of hum and buzz out of the radio uh, if we can get a shot of that you see the tube filaments beginning to glow And over and look at our B plus now, which is creeped up to 75 volts.
won't let the radio run long like this, uh, but it is powered up, and as you would expect, uh, it does sound like the electrolytic capacitor has probably failed in the radio, hence the hum, and probably also a contributing factor to the fact that the B plus looks to be just a little bit low. But the radio does appear to be uh, safe to work on and a candidate for further restoration. As you can see, we now have the voltage on the Variac up to 110 to the radio. Current still looks good. And the isolation um, load lamp, rather, uh, still just has a faint glow, which all looks really good.